ants, what amazing creatures. They work for the good of their colonies and they don't go on the internet to be jerks to other ants. They're also super strong, resilient, and selfless. <laughs> they also get into everything. Let's make them in Blender. Everything in this video represents only one of many ways to do this. Start by importing an image of an ant. You can use the Import Images as Planes add-on to make this simpler. Align it wherever you are most comfy. This is about you and your workflow. No, I'm just kidding. This is about my workflow. I chose to create a cube, slice it in half using loop, cut, and slide, made some more cuts using that same tool, then moved points around to form the head. There are thousands of videos on modeling out there. This is but one way to do it. Once I had the shape, I added a subdivision surface modifier to make it organically round, then duplicated it for the other shapes. Ants are tiny, and I'm not going to go in for close-ups here. If you are, then make sure you add more detail or grab a model of an ant that someone spent like 200 hours on. It's going to look better. It's all about what you need for your shot. Once I had the shapes I needed, being that they were all in half, I joined them together using Control j and then I mirrored them. I then went into side orthographic view to make it better er, there, ant body. Next, I made a sphere and then a cube and extruded it and moved points around in edit mode for one of the legs. Once I had one, the rest were just copy, paste, move points, copy, paste, move points. I used the legs for the antenna things too. Once I had a flat ant, which is the best kind of ant if you find a scout and you don't want a colony carrying off the crumbs from under your couch, I gave it a dark shader. Then I checked some googly reference and shaped out the body and side view a little bit more. Then I went crazy for a little while, moving points around to shape this out in all the views. I knew I wasn't going to get too close here, so I didn't add too much detail. Besides, this video is probably only going to get like five views anyway, so like, there's that. Oh, I gave him some eyes too, because I'm not, I'm not cruel, you know. Now, to make it move, we need a rig. There are awesome auto-rigging add-ons available. I'll not be using any of them here, because I want to keep it in Vanilla Blender, if there's such a thing. I've seen it in the comments all over the place. Vanilla Blender, like, oh, okay, I get it, all right. So I added an armature, and I positioned it to the main bone. Then, use Extrude to pull it out a few more times from this one. And then I went in the other direction. After that, I extruded out the legs in top view. But Kev, in other videos I saw they do it differently and more efficient. Shut up, Steve. I don't care. This works here. I spent a little time extruding them out and dragging them into place. Next, as I'd done in my Mandalorian video above, I named the ones on the side with an L in the name for left. That let me mirror the armature here and get an automatic other side. Now, somewhere here I screwed up the eyes, so I, I fixed them. Oops. I added antenna bones here and then parented them to the main head bone. This is just another way to do it aside from extruding. Now, if you select the bone right above the last one in pose mode, then hit shift I, you can select add IK and then choose two new empty object. And it adds an empty at the root and a line to the end of the chain. I had to shrink down the size of the empties here as my ant is tiny, but whatever. Once this is done, if you move the root in pose mode, the legs stay locked down. But Kev, the other bones are rotating and it's, that's just stupid. I give it a thumbs down. Yeah, okay, 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 I get it. To fix that, just select the bone still in pose mode, hit the green bone icon, go to relations and uncheck inherit rotation for all of the feet bones. There, now the feet are locked as they should be. Now. I added one more bone to the mix as a control bone, then parented all the other bones to that one. Now, if I move that one, the whole thing moves nicely. Yay! Time to test this on the ant. I selected the ant and parented it to the armature, choosing automatic weights. This usually works. To test it, with the ant selected, you can go to weight paint, then check against each bone's vertex group under object data properties for the ant object. It shows the bone influence weights, and you can paint to adjust here. Red is heavily influenced, and blue is none. It really takes playing around though to get the hang of it. Once I had what I wanted, I created a circle empty and parented everything to it so I had a nice little rigged ant package. I also named things correctly so that the patrons can use this in my Patreon, which the link is in the description, and they can use it really easily because it's up there and you can grab it now. I upload all the content for my videos to Patreon anyway, where I have like tons of content already up there from a few years of videos that I've been making. There's even a Houdini tier for those who want to go a bit further, but I digress. So to animate this thing, I looked it up and ants move by three and three. So I animated three legs up and three legs down then animated the other legs. It took a little while to figure out their motion and what keyframes would work. 
In the end, I decided to animate them all as one group going up, then forward, then down, then dragging back. And then I just offset three of them in the timeline and they'd stagger and that was way faster. I also knew that these would be from a distance. If I were to get close up, I'd really need to study ant locomotion and apply the 12 principles. But for this, I knew I could get away with something representative of motion, so I didn't go too crazy. If you get close, yeah, add lots of detail to sell it. Spend way more time on this part as it, it really will matter. Once I had a walk cycle going, I thought about adding some overlap and follow through to the antenna, but I held off because I didn't even know if I'd see it in the final. Time to make the line. I threw down a grid, then added a bezier curve, hit tab to edit, selected all the points and deleted them. That opens you up to the draw tool. If you choose surface and turn on shading, you can draw curves on objects. I go over that in the video above in way more detail. Here I took a minute to put the ant in its own collection labeled Ant 1. This will be important in a minute or two. Once I had the curve, I was all ready to make the line. I know geometry nodes are all the rage now, and I'd use them in the spider video for this, but I decided to do this the old fashioned way, as geometry nodes scare some of you, and that's like, that's totally cool. Not everyone is technical, and this method is still valid. I created a single vert. If you don't see it, enable extra objects add on and preferences add ons. I moved the vert near the start of the curve, gave it a particle system, dropped down the number to like 150, then selected the curve, gave it a force field, chose curve guide once I found it and hit play. And there. But Kev, I can't believe you forgot to make this emit from vertices instead of face. I know that from my expertise watching YouTube all day and night. You're so stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I get it. So I changed the particle system to emit from vertices instead of face and there. Like, now there's a line. In this setup, and it's not the best, lifetime controls speed. It's totally not intuitive, but it works here. Cool, I got moving spheres. Now I want them to be ants. I switched the render setting in particles to render as collection, then chose ants 1 like we'd just named before. Now I had tiny ants. I upped the scale in the particle system in there. There, there they are, they're moving. Yeah, these are stupid ants. Let's make them better. Rotate the main ant and it rotates the particles. Nice. But now they're not rotating with the curve. Yeah, okay. So check rotation, then check dynamic. There, done. See? Well, you still didn't do it in the correct order. <laughs> Chill, dude. This is real life. Luckily for me here, ants rarely move in twisty curves like this unless there are obstacles. I can straighten out this curve and not worry about this stuff, but I threw it in here for fun anyway, just so you can see how it moves with the curve. To get some randomness now, I spent a little time duplicating the original single vert from before. I added two more, and I got a small bit of randomness. The more you add here, the more random they'll look. You can even do more collections with varied movement to really break it up. The cool thing is, if you move the curve, you can have them traverse the terrain without using ray casting. It just keeps things simpler. You can even use that ant landscape. See what I did there? I said ant, ant land, uh, whatever. You can draw the curve on the surface trick, and the ants travel over the terrain. Cool. Here I added a PBR floor texture, a few different ants, and there. For real, I'd add way more variation, but you get the gist. Make sure to watch the video on the drawing curves thing on the surfaces. You're, you'll really like that next. Until next time, see ya.